be very fresh like okay you shouldn't be copied from somewhere you can't do just like you have copied three to four paragraphs from different sites and you have written it in your post and that's all no you can't do that it has to be fresh it has to be original it has to be creative it has to have a connection to what is going on what is the trend very importantly okay you can Hello everyone, welcome to another podcast. I am Baba Barora from Pro Junction and today we have with us Mrs. Ms. Prajeet Amasti. Ma'am is currently working as a brand marketing and communication executive at ELMI. She has done her MBA from Nasim Mochi Institute of Management Studies in the field of marketing. Welcome ma'am to this podcast. Uh, ma'am, if you can give a brief introduction about yourself, what is your role in your company? what are your day to day responsibilities and like what are your kras what are your kpis in your company as a brand marketing right uh, hi everyone first of all thank you weber for inviting me to this podcast uh, so okay uh, like the brief introduction you have given so currently i am with ey uh, working as a brand marketing and communications executive for the forensic services uh, service line and before this uh, i was in art actors pr uh, where i was handling uh, core sectors energy infrastructure uh, pharmacy medical real estate clients uh so basically my role defines it has two pillars basically it has uh, media communications and it has content so what you have to do is basically create a visibility for your brand or your company that you are working for or your client if you are working in a agency in the market in the industry so for that you have to do research uh, that what is going on in the industry what your uh, competitors are doing and then accordingly you have to see that okay what is your uh, spokesperson expertise you know and basis that you have to suggest some talk points to the media that can we interact with you can we collaborate with you through uh, on these talk points and then accordingly a story or a coverage appears in the media which showcases your uh, company's opinion or your company's thoughts or what they are doing in the industry right so for this uh, we have to like draft content also you have to draft articles you have to draft press releases you have to draft quotes you have to create documents uh, like a research document or a briefing document uh, for this and then accordingly it is pitched it is pitched to the media like there are various publications you know there are print publications there are online publications and there are tv channels so the uh, end point is to create the brand awareness if your brand is a new one if it already has awareness then the point is to create visibility on the topics which are currently trending in the industry which are currently trending in the market you know and then you, you also have to like make plans and design strategies design campaigns devise quarterly plans so that okay what will be my agenda for the next 3 months let's say because you can't just like snip a finger and everything will be done right you have to al- always plan everything in advance that okay like sometimes we also do things on observance days observance days are like for example there is a day on data privacy right so we plan that okay uh, let's do something on data privacy let's do a opinion article or let's sh- uh, do a interaction in which our spokesperson or the chairperson of the company spokesperson are basically a uh, ceo cmo cxo level people uh like mds these kind mm-hmm. of people who represent the thoughts of your company opinion of your company right so in that way these things work so that is my current role yeah ma'am you were talking about content uh, so like this is somewhat like a personal question like i also want to start like a marketing blog uh, or a marketing blog in my linkedin page or in some blog, blog site so if you can give some advice to a lot of people that like we had in our mba that content marketing is something that will grow big that will be in demand yes not just for media but also content in terms of seo content that you have to make for digital marketing yes so give something about uh, content and what type of content and how you should approach content 
Uh, so I think content marketing is there in every way possible in marketing, like whether you talk about business development or you talk about SEO or you talk about SEM or you talk about digital marketing, you talk about PR, you talk about brand communications, brand management, content marketing, I think is the root of it. Because like whatever you are communicating for your brand to the target audience is uh, you're communi communicating it through the content, you know. So you have to majorly focus on it. And for content also, you have to do a lot of research. You have to read a lot that, okay, what is going on in the industry? What is going on in the market? And for different sets of uh, platforms, different content is devised. For example, if you are talking about LinkedIn, right? So on LinkedIn, you will post very professional, very, very corporate kind of content. If you are talking about your building your own personal ID, okay, that is called self brand building and itself. That is a term which is, uh, which we use on LinkedIn to build yourself as a brand, right? You will talk about your opinions, your thoughts on LinkedIn, but then again, it should be professional. You can't write that. Okay. I went to this party and this happened. This, these, these kind of content will not go on LinkedIn, right? This will maybe work on Instagram or Facebook. In the same way for brands, content is devised in different, different ways for different, different platforms, right? For example, on Facebook and Insta, maybe we will do a brand will do a happy holy post maybe, right? Or a festival, festivity for post. But on the other hand, on YouTube, right? They can do thought leadership interviews. They can do podcasts, right? On LinkedIn, they can do a post on what they're doing in their business. Okay, what the new findings they are getting out of the work they are doing, right? And then again, in opinion articles, like uh, opinion articles, press releases are a major part of PR and brand marketing and communications field, right? So in opinion articles, the content will be completely different. There is a particular word limit. There is a range of 700 to 900 words of an article. Then it should not be very promotional in nature. You know, opinion articles can't be very promotional of the brand in nature. It should talk about the thoughts, the opinions your spokesperson or your CXO have in the industry, have in the place that they are working in, they have the expertise in. Then again, in press releases, the content is completely different. Press releases talks about, for example, press release can be on a store launch or on a product launch or maybe a new report that has come in the market. Or if you are launching any new report in the market, there are appointment releases also. So it depends again on the topic that what kind of a press release it is but in press releases like majorly these questions are answered like four w's and one h like why why this thing has happened where is this thing happening what is happening in the uh whatever you are doing the press release on for example if it's on a store launch so okay what is happening in the store launch right and then the background that like how you are doing it all of that comes in a press release in open articles, there are different kinds of questions that are answered. Basically, content marketing is very important because it justifies your idea, your thoughts of a brand and how you are trying to place it, trying to position it in your customer's mind, you know, and content should also be based upon your target audience. It's very important. Like you can't just write any uh, thing and you expect that, okay, this is uh, for everybody. No. You have to define your demographics. You have to define your audience. You have to define your publication. For example, if I'm writing an article for a financial publication, right, ET or Money Control or Business Standard or Mint for that matter, I will include more data, more figures, more, more financial um, top points in my article or in my content you know and on the same side if i'm writing it for linkedin or maybe on twitter i will keep it short because they have a word limit when you scroll through linkedin you don't have that much time that you read 700 to 900 words in a post right or uh, there is a word limit on twitter so you will make sure that okay very articulated points should be put on the social plat uh, media platforms and they should also like attract the attention of your target audience of your reader right because you are conveying your point in a maybe in a four to five lines of a paragraph right so it's very short so those short lines should be on point, should be very articulated, should connect with your audience and also make relevance for the topic that you are writing upon. So I think that is very important.
Ma'am, uh, you talked about uh, different platforms. You talked about content should be different on LinkedIn, content should be different on Twitter. If it's going on a news article like ENT, if it's going on like money control, it has to be different. Uh, another point of difference that I want to understand from you is the difference in content. We are when you are writing content for a big company like ENY. When you are writing for a company like a startup company, you are putting out content for them. And when you are putting out personal content, like a personal marketing or personal brand marketing, so what is the difference in content in that case, and how should it be done? In like, how is it done for these three different categories? Right. So, for example, uh, when I say that, okay, I am writing content for myself. Okay. On a maybe say on a LinkedIn, okay. So what what all things I will write first of all my name obviously. Then in LinkedIn comes your interest or whatever you are doing. If it's your designation you want to put or your area of interest like inf maybe influencer market. If somebody is interested in, so they can write influencer market here. Or if somebody is a pro uh, product manager, then they can write product management. If somebody is in digital marketing, they can write digital marketing. and your educational skills and what are you doing like what is your work ex in during the years what are your hobbies but again in terms of profession in terms of corporate thing right or maybe like if even if you are a art person you can again uh, like make your account on linkedin but then you have to talk about the work you are doing in life on linkedin you know and you have to talk about yourself you have to uh, share your interests on uh, different topics that are going on different trends that are going on in the market you know and again the content should be engaging that is the main point because i can write lines and lines of content you know but if nobody reads it that then what's the point of writing it so it should be engaging to the audience 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 should be should feel connected to your content right in the same way like if you you asked me uh, for startups right so for startups when we write content you have to write from a awareness perspective you know it's a new company not many people know about it right so you will write it from a brand awareness brand salience perspective okay to make the audience know about the brand to position your product or your service not your sorry for the startup the startup's product the startup service how you will uh, make the audience know about that now you just can't write a vanilla press release you know that okay this startup a certain xyz startup has launched a uh, say for example it's a mobile company startup has launched this phone you know this is a very vanilla kind of press release which is going on since i don't know how many years now but this doesn't work now like you have to connect the content of the startup with the trend which is going on in the industry okay like if i am okay, launching a pause phone, you uh, pause your bit ma'am you can yeah. add, add the attraction part also because how to get attraction also on your content first like posting and you can add the startup right. with the attraction part also right right so for that for the attraction part i think seo is very important if you want to drive traffic you have to select certain keywords okay so there are tools in which you can find keywords which are relevant to your industry which are trending as per your industry and you should include those keywords in your content right so that it will rank higher and then the attrition rate will be higher you know because more and more people will search about it if your link if your content uh, part comes uh, above okay then they will uh, click on that link okay so in that respect you have to uh, showcase the keywords you have to uh, add backlinks okay backlinks are very important uh, when you are publishing a story or publishing a content online backlinking is basically uh, for example in my article okay i have used a certain term say uh, for example i have used a term data privacy okay now i will connect that uh, term data privacy to a site that can be my client site that can can be my company site uh, for which the article is basically okay i will link data privacy to the link of that site so when the audience or when the reader will click on data privacy to know more about it they will be directed to for example say uh, ey site okay and then they can read more about it so uh, with this i am driving the traffic from my article to my company's website you know 
so that is also very important uh, backlinks uh, seo keywords the length of the content how engaging is it what are the what all uh, points you are conveying through your content does it connect with with your audience uh, does it sound interesting does it uh, contain the trends which are going on in the industry it should be relevant to the market you know yes ma'am and uh, so these are for the startups seo and obviously backlinks is general it applies whether it's a startup or it's a uh, like a well established brand or a mnc this thing is applicable to all i guess and in terms of a company like ey for example okay now almost everybody knows about ey i don't have to create content which suggest brand awareness you know i what i will write in my content is uh, the trending topics in the industry that my spokesperson is uh, speaking about the current topics which are going on in the industry so that way they will engage they will attract the audience you will create brand recall for a well established brand you know for example if you talk about a consumer brand okay uh, like if you talk about these uh, home care brands or uh, your lifestyle brands okay now most of the brands you must already be knowing i don't have to create awareness for that but then i can create recall for that for example if i am going in a market to buy a bajaj uh, a television or a samsung television or a sony television but if i have read about sony or uh, like for example let's take sony here if i have read about sony in the past 15 days or in the past uh, one week okay then i'll automatically be inclined towards okay let's go to sony because i have heard this has happened in the brand the brand has come up with this scheme or they have launched this new thing i have read about it so let's go and explore there first you know it it creates a recall in your mind that okay i have heard about it somewhere so let's try this first yes ma'am so that that the content matters on different platforms for different companies what uh, i got an idea from you is that if you are a startup its content has to be more engaging it's about creating awareness it's about being more present with what your audience connects with and as soon as your brand becomes maybe as big as like a microsoft like an eny it's more about staying brand recall as well as having a brand presence knowing keeping the audience know knowing that you are there in the market there's someone yes so the when they go for uh, purchasing when they go for use of your brand they remember they have that in their mind that okay now i have to go and buy a product which biscuit is better i should go for this one something like that Uh, yes no? yes and also you uh, you uh, a brand like for a established brand it's necessary that they make their audience know what they are currently doing what's new that they are doing yes. you know the what new functions what new technologies you know technologies i have becoming a great part of businesses in these days everybody is using emergent text in their businesses right there there are whole uh, companies based on the saas model based on a cloud model you know so you have to keep updating your audience okay that this is new that we are doing now we are talking about this because we have an expertise in this you know that way and also ma'am i had this is again somewhat of a personal question like uh, i feel that the attention span of people is going down day by day i think the biggest example of that is the popularity of reels the popularity of youtube stories so how uh, so when i relate this to content it's like how important it is to keep your content something more engaging because earlier i used to see people my father my grandfather used to say that reels are needed out of books they need a lot of articles but nowadays for us it's more about watching videos rather than reading content so how important it is for a content writer to keep your article engaging and how important and the next question is how to keep it engaging right right so uh, for that as i told you first thing is your content should be very fresh like okay you shouldn't be copied from somewhere you can't do just like you have copied three to four paragraphs from different sites and you have written it in your post and that's all no you can't do that it has to be fresh it has to be original it has to be creative it has to have a connection to what is going on what is the trend very importantly okay you can't just 
uh, like start normally okay that uh, today this brand has launched this certain thing and it is used for this. this is a very vanilla type of content which was used maybe 10 10 or 15 years ago you know now you can't just write simply that okay no you have to tell the people that okay these are the pain points which my services or my company's product are solving you have to drive your content that way you have to be uh, articulate enough in your content because as you said the attention speaking uh, attention span of a reader is decreasing you know so you have to keep your content short engaging connected with the current trends uh, then also it is important that your content should not should like can it can start with a question you know okay what are your thoughts on this it should end on that you know it, it shouldn't be like anything anywhere there is no connection between the paragraphs there is no alignment you can't you shouldn't write like long long paras you know keep your content in pointers space it out that is also important because if i give you a certain page okay which has three paragraphs three long eight to nine lines of paragraph no picture nothing there they are just three big paragraphs on a page it will take you a lot of time to read it and maybe you won't even read it the whole thing but at the same time if i space out i can, I can just content, relate that to our case studies in college whenever we <laughs> hear case study a six page long case study with no photos no data it's like we don't want to read it and suddenly there's another case study that's also six pages but that has a few images few data and suddenly everyone says okay this is a nice case study yes yes so it's a, this is also a very good point you know like back up your content with data points okay like 74 percent people said this or maybe through a report you can take a data point that okay according to a evi report 75 people are saying this and that this will also help to authenticate your content for your readers you know data points graphs these are also very much important numbers put numbers in your content uh, space it out in pointers make it relevant make it engaging with your audience tell it like a story you know marketing is an art of storytelling it's driving the narrative it's all about that so you have to like showcase your content like you are telling a story to the audience in that way uh, and ma'am uh, just last last of my own personal queries uh, ma'am how important is about uh, within that content is visualization also because i know when you read people read books like i don't read books it says that it creates a lot of visualization. You have to do a lot of visualization when you read. But for some people, when they see something and that it is represented in the form of visuals, like I'm reading this 74% of this population. And when you see that in the form of visual in that content, it is much better to understand. So how important is that images and visualization while you're writing the content? So yes, as you said, it is rightly correct because our brain works like that, you know, when, as everybody say, when somebody says apple, your brain automatically forms a red image of an apple. So in the same way, when you see visuals, it gets captivated in your mind easily than when you are just reading words, you know. So yes, visuals are very important. But then again, according to the platforms, it depends that how much you can put the visuals, you know. Like for example, if I am uh, placing a story or a, a news article in a newspaper, I can't put very, uh, I can't put a lot of visuals in it. I can put a graph, okay. I can put a single image. I can put two, three data points in a graphical manner or in an infographic manner. You know, infographics are also very popular because again, it shows content in a very visualized form. And uh, again, it, uh, infographics are very articulated. It shows content in a very visualized form. So these are also really nice. You have charticles to uh, represent your content in a visual, you know, uh, pleasing to eye form, let me say. You know, for example, if you do it on Twitter or if you do it on LinkedIn, you can post, you can also post videos which is like if you are, uh, if there is a content uh, piece uh, based on a process. So you can create a video which explains that process. But again, the videos or the visualization of content again can't be very long, you know. If you, if I'll post a 15 minute video, 
I can't expect most of my target audience to watch that video because it's a 15 minutes. Even the attention uh, span of seeing the visual things is also decreasing because there are so much data on the net. There are lakhs and crores of posts based on videos. There are reels. There are so many things. You So again, for a video also, you have to keep it short. You have to keep it on point. You have to keep word to word. You can't add a long, long paras if you are like showcasing, uh, for example, text in a video. You can't showcase long paras. You can maybe voice over it whatever you are saying but on the in the video it should come like you know the pointer should be a one line pointer or a max to max one and a half line pointer because the video is going on and then and then you can explain the whole thing the whole process through the visualization part also so yes of course there are like for example in press releases uh, press releases have also evolved during the pandemic. Now we, you can do digital press releases. What a digital press releases has a whole photo gallery, you know, in itself. It has the whole site. You can add presentations, you can add GIFs, you can add as many as visual formats you want in a digital press release. So you can embed things in that. So yes, things are evolving. Marketing is a field which is continuously evolving with innovation, with creativity. And that is the most important part for a field, for an industry to keep evolving based on the changing environment, the changing times, you know, digital marketing is gaining so much popularity. It is uh, forecasted to be the most, uh, you know, growing industry in the near, uh, in the near future, digital marketing. So again, that is also about creating visuals like one part of it is about promoting your brand or promoting your company promoting a product or service through visuals in your mobile phone in the hand of, of your consumer uh, now uh, i've asked a lot of questions and queries i have cleared it through you um, now a lot of people in mbas nowadays are good with content they're good with writing they're good with posting content they may have done it for their clubs or committees at the college level. But uh, what do you think are, uh, if you want to be like a content writer or someone who posts content for a corporate for a company, what do you think are the key skills that he should have, that he should develop in order to be at that position, get a job as a content writer, get someone who writes content for a company. So what are the key skills that he needs to develop? If he sees himself, someone taking up in the future the job needs. Right, right. So I think uh, to be a content writer, see, there are no certain set of rules as, as such. That okay, there are these rules you have to do. Uh, if you are writing content, you have to follow these rules to be in particular. No, there is no such thing as a set of rules in the whole industry, I can say, in the whole marketing area, I can say, because it's a very creative field, right? For writing content, first of all, it's very important to read content read how other people are writing how the journalists are writing what is getting published if for example because if you're picking a topic okay that topic can be very vast for example if i again take data privacy data privacy is a very vast very deep topic in itself you can't write everything about it so when you read when you research you will understand that okay in data privacy also these certain things are important these certain things are relevant to the general audience or to the brand for which you are writing the content for okay like in data privacy also there are very uh, new new functions Okay, every company performs different functions of the thing, of the industry. So based on your company, based on your client, you have to see that what are the topics in data privacy, which is important for my company, which is important for promoting my brand. And accordingly, you have to write the content. You, can, you can't just write everything what is there in data privacy. Okay. And then again, uh, first of all, it's reading. Second of all, it's research. Uh, understand the pattern of writing okay there are like there is the uh, if you're writing an article it, it will be written in a different form if you're writing a press release you have to answer different questions if you're writing a quote for an industry story for example okay so the quote has to be short the uh, quote has to be on point it should be balancing it should have a balanced tone it can't just take a certain uh, side that okay i i will pick this side 
and i will speak on that no it should be in accordance with the article in which your quote is going you know so there are your content writing uh, your way of content writing depends on the content that you are writing and obviously you have to read obviously you have to research obviously you if you want you can like talk to the people who are working in that area okay for example uh, like i am not from a uh, you know financial background okay but i am working in ey so i have to write things or maybe i have to uh, you know build some content piece which is based upon the maybe on the fintech market okay now i don't have much knowledge about fintech market how will i write it right so first of all i will do research i will read what other people are writing how they are writing what all points what all queries okay they are solving in their content piece okay and then also i can connect with a person like i can connect with a consultant let's say in ey who is actually working in that particular area if we take fintech so let's say a consultant who is particularly working for a client in the fintech space i can talk to him i can understand through him okay what is he working what all queries is he solving for the client which is relevant in the industry and accordingly i can put certain points from them in my content keeping in mind ki okay i have to filter it out you have to filter the content out you because there is so much content on the internet if you will research okay you can't just put everything in your content piece you have to filter out the content so all of these things matter and then also just keep writing on certain things like never stop even if it's uh, for your company or your brand or your client or for yourself you know just pick a certain topic for example if you are going for a travel just write whatever you are doing in that tra- travel it will always help you know it will always help improve your writing skills and there are certain tools which also helps you in uh, or uh, like choosing headlines or like making content more engaging making it more short or making it articulate then again grammar is very important you have to understand that you can't do grammatical mistakes in a content piece it's not acceptable in the in the you know in offices or if my article is getting published so i'm sending it to the media you can't do grammatical mistakes so because it's a least thing is the least thing a, a person finally whom you are sending your content to or even if you are writing it on your own linkedin then your audience they will es- expect that it should be grammatically correct if someone wants to make a cv wants a cv for this job profile like a brand marketing and communication person at a big company like ed by microsoft or google so what should be the key highlights that is cv should contain so that it is shortlisted for the next round and then you will feel that he is capable for this job so what should be the key highlights or key points in cv okay okay uh, so i think like i am not a uh, like a i'm not an expert in this but okay how many interviews i have given i can like share some thoughts based on those so brief intro of yours is very important keep a 2 to 3 2 to 4 liner intro of yours at the starting of your cv that okay i uh, these are my qualifications currently i am working here or if you have done a past internship you can write uh, i have previously worked in this organization and on what all things you have worked you know the functions that you have performed in a job role or your area of interest that you have uh, gained during the years or maybe if you are a fresher then whatever you want to get into right so all of those things because whatever you are want to get into you must have done something on that you know like i can't say i want to go uh, into a product management role and i don't have a single uh, like any idea about it okay you have to understand 
you have to talk to your peers or the industry people or just uh, like search on net that okay what is product management you have to have some knowledge of it so a brief intro about yourself then you can write uh, if you are a fresh you can write about your internships uh, the what is the duration of the internship what all things you have done what all things you have learned in the internships right then obviously your qualifications matter your certifications soft skill points is also i think is important like team working or you are flex flexible or how you adapt to the corporate world or if you are uh, you know if you are a uh, everybody's hard working see you can't write i am very hard working everybody says they are hard working no will nobody will say that okay no 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 i won't work these things are not very much appreciable because it's very like it's by default you have to work if you are joining a firm so you have to write certain uh, like good communication skills you have to be well versed with microsoft i think during corporate during uh, job microsoft is your best friend be well versed with word excel and powerpoint you know and any certifications or programs that you have done or if you have taken part in uh, for example the co curricular activities like there is mun then there are uh, tech fests in every college that happens so if you have played a certain role in those you can also write that but most importantly you must define what all work you have done either in your previous work profile or in your previous internships whatever it is you know like if you are a fresher i think the interview will not really a uh, focus on exactly what you have worked but it will fo- uh, they will definitely focus on how you have done it you know because it's maybe internships are of how long 3 months 4 months 5 to 6 months max you know so in that period okay how you are able to cope up with the corporate environment how flexible you were how uh, you wanted to do things on time or are you procrastinator are you able to adjust with the organization culture you know all of these things matter and even in that brief period of time whatever you have worked upon how much you have learned from them you know how much you understand what have you have done okay because that shows that okay even if the person doesn't know about a certain field or a certain industry the eagerness to learn will make them competent will make them learn new things you all always build curiosity always have that eagerness of learning in that nature the attitude that okay i know everything or yes i am the expertise of the subject this doesn't help in long term you know this will may help you like even i am not sure about it i'm just expressing my views here they may work for you in short term that okay i am expert of this subject but you also know like we are in a world where things are changing every day you know there are cryptocurrency there is nft now there is web3 coming there is a metaverse coming there is a whole cyber space the financial sector is moving towards digitization digital transformation there is a whole fintech world out there so things are continuously evolving and with that a person should also improve and upskill themselves so a eagerness to learn a curiosity of different industries or different trends that are going on is very important because if you don't have the learning uh, you know learning uh, nature then you will be like that okay i know this and i will do this but what if you are not able to right what if you are not able to do that do you have that much confidence that okay whatever comes my way i will do it but you you can't just guarantee that thing you know because there are so many things so you have to make sure that you are not you will not be like with that attitude that okay i am the expert of this subject i will know anything that is a very important thing in an interview you know be humble be confident humbleness doesn't mean that you have to be nervous or you have to show that okay i don't know anything be humble be confident tell the interview that okay i know these these things i have worked upon these these things in these these areas this is my area of interests and always and 
uh, at every point of time or during every interview you should know about what the industry uh, what is happening in the industry what the competitors are doing what the company is into uh, or what the company is doing for which you are interviewing for you know sometimes update your cv according to the company that you are interviewing for for example if a, in marketing also there are various companies who are looking for people in various roles but in those roles the functions differ right for example in a brand communication role one company has a, a in house brand communication team okay and one company has a agency okay so requirements can be different the company which have a in house team they can say that okay you have to coordinate with different teams internally like in the organization to gather or to fulfill a certain task right but at the same time a company which has a agency they will ask that okay you have to coordinate with the agency to understand these these things and you have to suggest the task or suggest the thing which has to be done for the company to this agency and you have to supervise it okay so there are different requirements according to different roles and sometimes you have to like uh, um change your cv or change the points in your cv based on those requirements right for example uh, one company can just look for a traditional pr marketing role one company is looking for that okay i want traditional also and i want digital also i want content also and i want media communication or media relations also some companies are focusing on that okay no uh, i uh, we have we already have a agency to deal with the media communication part we need a person who is well versed in content you know so accordingly you have to decide you have to tweak up your cv that these are the requirements and i am fulfilling these these are my area of interests i have work upon these things keep up skilling yourself according to your areas of interest so i think that all of these things can go in a cv and your cv again your cv shouldn't be very long if you have done only internships if you are just a fresher your cv should be just one page long if you have maybe 3 to 4 or 3 to 5 years of experience then you can have a one and a half page cv you know because there are thousands of people who are applying for jobs every day nobody has time to review the whole cv once your cv is shortlisted then maybe your recruiter will go through the whole thing but for shortlisting the cv and again cvs also like people companies have these softwares you know with shortlist cvs of uh, thousands of uh, candidates who are submitting their cvs so the uh, tool which is like shortlisting the cvs they also search for like certain keywords you know that according to uh, for example uh, you know about jd companies roll out job description when they are coming for interviewing in a college or even when they are offering you a role uh, uh, like out out from your college you know they have this job description this jd thing so in, from that jd you can see that okay what the company is looking for and how can i showcase my capabilities my expertise my area of interests according to the jd it it's a must to read a jd ma'am uh, suppose uh, you series shortlisted you move into the interview get selected i want you to know like for uh, people would know that how is your life as someone who manages content for e and by or how is your life means what do you see the work life balance and what do you think are the things that i are also saw that you did a course in from mica as well in terms of digital marketing and communication for upskilling yourself so what is your life as a content manager and how will the corporate life be if they get into this field like a brief idea of someone Sitting here, wants to imagine that if I become a content manager, how my life is going to be in the corporate. Right, right. So, a content manager is a different role. Again, uh, what I do, I do media relations as well as content, as well as brand marketing, as well as devising strategies or a campaign for my company. You know, so it's briefly like okay, uh, like research is a daily part of your day. Okay. you have to read news you uh, make sure that you have you develop a habit of reading news and specifically what is happening in your sector it's very important every day just read something 
start reading et start reading mint whatever publication you like okay so that will give you an idea what is happening in the industry okay then you have to see what the competitors are doing is there any story or is there any article that have come today which is uh, in which my competition is mentioned in which uh, my uh, they are expressing their thoughts or their opinions on a certain topic then you see what okay what topic is this then you will see okay is my company doing anything in this field in this area ठीक है यू विल सी वॉट वॉट द एक्सपर्टीज ऑफ योर स्पोक्स पर्सन ओके एंड देन अकॉर्डिंगली यू हैव टू फ्रेम सम टॉक पॉइंट यू हैव टू फ्रेम सर्टन कॉन्टेंट पिच इज यू हैव टू ड्राफ्ट आर्टिकल्स राइट सो आफ्टर ड्राफ्टिंग द कॉन्टेंट आफ्टर डिसाइडिंग दैट ओके दिस इज द पॉइंट दैट आई विल पिच टू द मीडिया यू हैव टू डू मीडिया कॉलिंग जस्ट चेक विद दैम दैट ओके दिस इज द a uh, thing that my company is working upon or that we want to talk about it's a latest trend which is going on these days you have done previous like obviously because if you are like uh, calling a journalist right you have to see what they are writing upon you have to do your homework it's very more you can just go to a tech journalist and talk about financials right you have to see what uh, what the beat of a journalist is. so journalist also cover different different topics there are corporate journalists there are business journalists there are tech journalists there are it journalists okay so you have to understand what uh, what are the sectors that they are writing upon what kind of articles or what kind of stories they have done previously according to them you will pitch uh, your uh, talk points or your content piece to them that okay ma'am how are you uh, hope you are doing well always ask is it a good time to talk because you can't just disturb a person like that you know that okay i am i am calling from here and i want uh, this story that uh, comes in the media so that uh, visibility of my brand that's created okay they are not uh, sitting there to entertain you they are doing their work and it is your work to help your brand uh, create a visibility okay so always be very humble ask is it a good time to talk if they say that yes okay then you can start the pitching that okay my company is doing this thing or certain trend is going on in the industry would you like to uh, collaborate with us would you be interested in a story uh, on this topic and then whatever the journalist replies according to that you have to check internally sometimes or you can just confirm the topic Uh, like like these you have to create media communication you should have uh, good communication skills for this uh, then uh, like this is the media relation part i have already told you the content part okay then again devising strategies devising campaigns that okay women's day is coming so women's day is coming uh, is there a women leader in my uh, client side or in my company if there is a women leader how can i showcase my uh, women leader work in the media you know how can i create visibility for that so they, these are observance days basically data privacy day women's day or any other days coming like these these are observance days you should create visibility of your brand on these certain particular occasions like on budget on budget companies their marketing teams they go crazy because everybody wants to have their viewpoint placed in the media publication you know so and it happens very fast sometimes like you have to be on your fingers you have to be on your snaps because uh, like the topics as i told you the uh, environment is constantly changing it's constantly evolving you know and with that the topics are also constantly trending for example if a journalist is writing on cryptocurrency today he will not just write on the introduction of cryptocurrency for 7 days right he will touch different different aspects different different parts of the cryptocurrency and he will write on he or she uh, will write on those different different aspects during several days maybe or sometimes it's not maybe even several days maybe they are doing just one story or just two stories okay so you have to understand those things also it should be relevant it should be like uh, for example if a journalist is doing a story tomorrow and they want your quote so you have to draft 
content fast you have to get it approved internally then you have to share it with the journalist so all of these things matter all of these things happens in your corporate life if you choose brand marketing and communications as your field right and like you can you have to write scripts for video interviews or for webinars you have to think of opportunities you have to understand your consumer behavior if you are uh, working for a b2c company okay that okay uh, like for example if you are working for a makeup brand you have to see that okay these kind of lipstick shades are trending girls are getting interested in organic in vegan products more okay so you have to drive your narrative according to that okay that my products are vegan we have these trending shades these are new shades that have come up in the market you have to create visuals in a campaign to showcase like uh, brands create a lot of advertisements you know in that way so you have to showcase everything in that sense yes ma'am so ma'am as we come to the end of the podcast i would just last like to ask this final question that if you have any final piece of advice for students who are in their mba for students who would be just going into the corporate world like those who are in the second year so any final piece of advice you can have for them for their career ahead for their mba as well if they have any thought um i think like when i was doing my mba i don't think it's very long it's been like 3 3 and a half years just like that so when i was doing it even i was a bit clueless that okay what what exactly do i want to let yes i have to do marketing but there are so many things in marketing that one can do so what exactly i want to do for this i think internships certifications or there are many entrepreneurs there are many freelancers who look for resources on project basis you know for for maybe a tenure of 2 months you can work with a freelancer or a budding entrepreneur to understand that okay what your area of interest is because i think that is very important if you just go into a industry that okay now uh, i will learn here whatever i want to learn and i don't know anything about it that will not much work in your favor you know i am not saying it is impossible one can any day make their way to the thing that they want to achieve okay it is always that how much time how much effort you want to put to achieve something and it's it's important also you know if you want to achieve something you have to work for it you can't just get your way just like that until unless you own a business yourself <laughs> that is a different thing altogether but yeah and i think being confident don't be nervous it's okay if if you have a willingness to learn if you have a willingness to achieve something put your efforts in that put your time in that i think you can do anything a person according to his area his or her area of interest can achieve a lot of things if they have the capability if they have the power if they have the time and efforts to invest into it to work towards it upskill yourself try learning new things and start reading very important start reading whatever you think is good like if uh, someone likes to read a novel start reading a novel if someone likes likes to read news then nothing like it start reading a newspaper pick a certain app pick a certain website that you are interested in or the content that you like read blogs read infographics it's very important if you want to enter the marketing world it's very important to know what is happening in the industry what big brands are doing how they are building themselves so i think reading is very much you should be aware about the things that are going on in your environment and what marketing has for you if you want to go into it okay there are different fields there are sales there is business development there is pr there is brand management there is product management so be specific what do you want to do in which field you want to get into because it will help you because you will then work in that direction and having a direction is very important you can't just be like that okay dekh liya jayega jo hoga aise matlab these things doesn't work when you are old enough or when you actually do something you want to achieve something set objective set a goal that is important 
um, uh, we learned a lot of things for you. Uh, I think the advice to read is something very important because, uh, like, I want to start my own blog. I want to start a, a channel, a place where I write content. So I realize how important it is to read and know things because I am someone who gets most of his information from videos. But I have seen that the habit of reading is also very important rather than just seeing videos. So thank you so much, ma'am, for your time. You taught us about different how different writing content on different platforms. You taught us taught us about what is like to keep brand awareness, how to keep brand information out there, and how to put your CV, how to handle interviews. So thank you so much for your time, ma'am. Thank you, Vibhav. Thanks a lot for having me here. I hope I made relevant points for the audience. I hope <laughs> it 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 uh, sounds to be useful. And thanks a lot for this. <laughs>